those eggs, a little bit of fruit. Um, we're gonna get in this gym, man. Main goal of the day is to get better. So, gotta fuel up properly. And then we in the lab. With my guy Junior Hairston. And it's lit. It's gonna be live, man. Yeah. <laughs> You say I'm being what? You being you? Really? Hey, take me aside. Like, what you mean? What you mean? When I say a lot, like, I don't know if you have children, but it seems like it's like kind of easy at first, but when they get older, then they have interests. And then, like, he's going through these growth spurts, and I don't get, like, a memo. It's just like he'll wake up one day and he can't wear all his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, he was my first gift, so we have a really great relationship, and um, he has taught me so much. Just and then he's making this transition. He's like a teenager now. Like he's like this is like you know, twelve. He's a preteen, but he's like fourteen now. So it's like even though um, I've been his mom the longest, I'm still learning. Just the whole just being a male and then like 2023 20, then social media so um but i really i enjoy being his mom because we have a really really strong relationship i want to ask um where did you get that from where did you get what from put the table i ain't got a cook oh you don't oh. Mm. that's his own personal thing i guess oh, okay all right that's your story you think it too yeah i'm sticking to it Really, really strong relationship. Um, I remember when I was pregnant with him, um, I used to read the Bible to him. Um, and while he was still in my belly, and when he came out, first of all, we had to get evicted, okay? Because he, I was 42 weeks. Now, a normal pregnancy is 40 weeks. I was 42 weeks, so he was hanging in there by his toenails, okay? Um, but I think that just trying to make sure that I'm who I need to be for him um, as a mom um, and just speaking with him just try to see what he's going through and how his mind is working I try to make sure at the end of the day I ask him you know open-ended questions like you know what was your favorite part of the day and things like that but he's it's a blessing but like I said as he's getting older it becomes a lot only because I'm still a first time, you know, with this whole mother thing and just the different transitions and his emotions and he's changing. That's a real question. I'm not trying to talk crazy. When the last time you beat me at anything, son? Huh? When's the last time you beat me at anything? I beat you in a race before. We've had a race. Yeah, 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 y'all have. Yeah, yeah. I got my off. There you go. But you when is really the last time races. you beat me at anything? He I just beat one. The last like time eight. we played one on one, who won? You said anything, you. baby. Yeah, who won? You. Me, right? I'm one thing I try to teach him is that if you're on time, you're late. And if you're early, you're on time. Um, that's another thing. And just uh, making sure that whatever craft you have, you are getting better, you are working on that niche. It's something that, you know, especially it's a God-given talent. You know, when you use that talent, you're giving glory to God. So it's something that should not be taken lightly. Don't, don't I say that. But I knew, what the, I knew what the root was. It's like, dude, you already he, told her. He kicked me in the back you, of my knee. Okay. No, he, listen. Listen. He was listen. walking behind listen. her. Listen. He was mad about them chicken nuggets. <laughs> listen. I know he was mad. He was emotional about it. Listen, listen because she has done the same thing <laughs> 12 times. It don't matter if I write my name on it. It don't matter if I say do not touch him. Hey, Mom. She just thinks. She just go in there and just eat it. So you want a reconciliation Okay, for good. It ain't right now. That's what you're saying. I mean, we're doing it right now. Huh? I'm just being my shit. I mean, so what you want? I mean, how, how can she Just make a man, bro? Right. I mean, the yeah. nugget's gone. She gonna buy me some more nuggets. I'll buy you some nuggets, man. <laughs> I'll pay her debt. <laughs>
like a little pull-up bar. We got all my jerseys right there that I've worn. Like all the camps that I've been to. Um, I got medals over here. I got, my art teacher made me this. Um, I also got like a lot of rings that I've worn in recent years. Like when I was younger, I was kind of like a basket case. Like I used to react to every little thing. But now it's just like, I didn't got better with it. Still trying to work on it. Um, my jump shot had definitely developed cause I used to not be able to shoot. Like I used to like just straight downhill. Ball handle has gotten better. Like I got a little bit quicker and it's like, cause I used to have like big feet. Like I've always had big feet. So like, I feel like I kind of like grew into like my body a little bit cause like it was always kind of just like lanky and I was just like there and I was just everywhere. I feel like I got better in that part. Pretty much all hoopers. Like in my family, my great grandma hooped, my great great grandma hooped, my granddad hooped, my great granddad hooped, and I think it was my great 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 granddad that was seven foot. They say he was seven foot or six foot eleven. Yeah, I might be playing with my dad, like he might be like beating me like eleven, like eleven oh. He might be going to fifteen, beat me eleven oh. He just start talking smack, and I just get like sometimes like he don't. I feel like he the only one that can really get under my skin to make me like act in a different way but playing with my mom she was pretty much like a like defender three-point shooter like, like mid-range type of person she didn't really drive that much but she only drove when she needed to um, so playing with my mom it's, it's a lot competitive i think she's a little bit more competitive than than probably my dad but like my dad getting in that mold it's like I'll cut it when I get back. Yeah, you take the whole thing out. We riding in a truck. Yeah. Like, what's the mental approach you take to get better in the workout? You say one more time. Like, getting say when you say my goal is to get better, right? What does that mean? Right. So, how do you get better in the workout? Going hard, like pushing yourself. So that, so that in the game it can be like easier. I mean, it's been a real blessing to me to watch him grow up and develop over these 14 years that um, I've been fortunate to be in his life. Um, you know, from the beginning, he loved basketball. And, you know, I was very happy that he loved basketball because I played uh, college um, and played at a high level after college. So, you know, it's definitely you know, a real joy to have him enjoy the game that I love so much. Um, so to see him grow and develop, uh, but he's actually a really great kid. Um, very charismatic, uh, very smooth, and just um, has a smile that can just bright up the room. So I'm not betting. I'm not gonna bet on that. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, a, a, a day where he don't got it going is 77%. I see them shoot 86, 88%. So I feel like 83 is a is a good enough. That's a that's a that's a good start. Take on it. All right, so look, man, we at shoot 360, getting prepared for the first workout of the day uh, with his trainer, Junior Harrison. About to go in here and get better, lock in, lock and load, right? I expect to shoot 80 percent and above for sure. Um, I expect to get better with like, like um, definitely like going game speed more, um, having better pace when I play. That's one thing I accept to get better at. I was right. Oh, right.
right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. One more five minutes over. My name is Junior Harrison. I've uh, been training Cho uh, for about like three or four years now. First saw Cho at the McDavid camp. Uh, I called him a little spin move. That's what he had come to me. He was spinning on everybody. But one thing I did notice about him, he had that dog in him. And I always wanted to work with him. So when I got the opportunity to work with him, we've been rocking ever since. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people want to get to the work room, but the resistance work is the best work. So they really get to that high school age, that's when they can start pumping the iron. This right here, get the job done, because it's going to add the strength, but it's not going to tear down their body. The main principle that I instill with Cha Cho is just being disciplined. Um, I feel like discipline will take you a long way. Um, and I always preach to him to discipline, it, discipline yourself so others don't have to. Um, you have goals you have things that you want to accomplish in life, you know, it's always going to require discipline. And how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you can discipline yourself with the game of basketball, you know, getting up, training, even on days when you don't feel like it, um, but putting in that work and, and really sticking to the grind and being disciplined to stick to it, you can do it in other things and you can definitely be successful. My expectations for Chacho uh, moving into this middle school season is to be a leader, to continue to develop, you know, his whole entire game. He's known now as a, as a scorer and as a dominant scorer, um, but my challenge and expectation for him is to take those next steps as a leader, uh, using his voice and, you know, taking the challenge on the defensive side as well, but really just growing into a leader and affecting the game outside of just scoring, uh, being a true impact player and understanding his value to the game of basketball. Let's do it, big dog. Cynthia McKenzie, and I am Jalen's grandmother, Jonathan's um, mom, and um, I'm just so proud of Jalen. He, from a baby, he's just been so humble and so smart and so driven, actually. Um, he's just got a good heart, he's got a good mind, he's got a good soul. Um, and he's so sweet. My name is Fanny McKenzie and I'm Jalen's great-grandmother. And I've been in Jalen's life since before he was born, really. Um, Jalen is he's a special person. He's a very special person. Um, he's good, he's honest, he's loving. He loves his family, he loves his sisters, he loves his mother and his father so much. And he's, 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 he's amazing. Well, I would say principles would be um, to be kind, to be loving, to know God, um, work hard, um, love his family, treat people, like he wants to be treated and you 
no things of that nature. I would say uh, we've taught him discipline. We've taught him um, how to put God first in his life. And we've taught him uh, what life is all about, the ups and downs. And we've, uh, we've just seen him grow in, in those principles. Labor Day cookout, man. About to eat good. Burgers, hot dogs, chicken. Just burgers on the grill right now. Just put them on. It's gonna be one to remember for sure. I'm Wanda Douglas. And I'm Tony Douglas, and I'm his uncle. And I'm his aunt. Uh, I watched his skill set uh, mature through the years. But what was more valuable to me than his skill set, his talent, was his, uh, his value system, his character, who he is. Um, he has held his relationship with God very tight. Uh, he knows how to treat people. And, and um, very good people skills is one thing that he has and he has held on to very tightly. He has respect for his his relatives and, and how he treats people throughout the years. That's more important to me than the skill set that he has in basketball because with those skills that he has as the value of the man that he has become from a boy he's developing into a man, that's going to carry him very far. So uh, that's what I look for in him to take into adulthood and to uh, fatherhood and to transfer the skills that his parents have already put in him as a young man, those values that he needs to carry him. As he's grown up, he loves his sisters, he loves his mom and dad, he loves his family, he loves his grandma Fanny, oh my God. And, um, and so he's always been very, like Tony said, he's always been very respectful. He's always been really into basketball. It gave him an outlet. It gave him a way to get out and to get involved into something that really meant something to him. And it's been a pleasure to watch him grow because he spent so much time with his dad. So him and his dad felt a great bond between each other. And basketball was one of the vehicles that they were able to use to stay connected. I think that his hard work, his determination, and his discipline has allowed him to become the player that he is now. Um, you know, being willing to be proactive and put the work in without being asked or without being quote unquote dragged into the gym. Um, I think that, you know, that's really going to take him far and he, I believe he's going to go well and beyond his dreams and aspirations. I helped raise him. He was with me every day. He's my baby. And he's grown up to be a sweet young man and he's smart. He has a good head on his shoulders. Don't be grabbing so head. How you block? How you block? You cheating. Why? Why, why are you doing this? You grabbing me. How you, how, how you doing? Uh. You just said, you just said, don't grab me. I've, I've always told him to be truthful with himself and to work hard to do what he wants to do in life. And he wants to play basketball and that's his joy. So I told him to just keep it up, keep up the good work.